Det är jag. Tack för det. Tack du. Okej. Here you go. Okay, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and this is Faithful Rattos. I hoped that introduction was a little bit cute. As you can tell, the boys are here out on free roam now. Um, this isn't a video that I really wanted to have to make, obviously. Nobody likes making videos like this. But here we are. Um, making another video explaining a really tough decision that I had to make a couple of weeks ago and um, sharing some really sad news with you. So if you follow me on Instagram you may already know this but Coulson who was one of our new babies passed away. Without sounding really dramatic or emotional or anything like that it really does feel like I'm cursed to have lost now a third baby rat from wonderful breeders and I think a little bit of what's helping me is the fact that maybe my experiences I can share them as I do and maybe that will help people and maybe that's why it's happening to me. So I thought I could make a video and explain all the things that happened and the steps that I took to try and resolve the issue and, and all of that and hopefully maybe making a video like this is a little bit cathartic to me but also maybe it will help you to notice the signs when something is wrong maybe to advocate yourself, advocate for yourself better at the vets or I don't know I just hope this helps a little bit I think since I made the video about adopting them and all of that stuff I think you deserve to know what happened to him and if you don't follow me on Instagram which you should it's just faithful rattos um I wanted to make a video here since I made a video about getting him so hi Osiris So, the first thing that we noticed is it was about, I think, maybe two weeks, maybe it was a week and a half after I got them, I was on a live on my Instagram introducing the babies, they were on free room on the sofa, and I was currently, I was sharing a live with my friend Emma from Novella Rats, and I noticed a head tilt on Coulson and it was very very minor and I was like Emma do you see this do you also see this head tilt and they also saw the head tilt and so obviously I right away sent a message I ended the live when I noticed this right away I sent a message to his breeder and I also sent a message to my vet now it wasn't an, an immediate huge concern but obviously it was concerning and I wanted to start medication straight away. So if you didn't already know, a head tail is a very, very common symptom of an ear infection. So we started to treat this situation as it was an ear infection. So we started to treat with a steroid, dexamethasone, and an antibiotic, cotrimoxazole. Over the course of the next three days or so, his head tail, whilst it was very minor to start with, did lessen and there was no other symptoms of him being unwell. And then I noticed after about three days, so this, that was on the Monday, I started the medication on the Tuesday, and on the Thursday evening, I just noticed a lack of condition in hand, when I handled him, he just felt a little bit lighter and a little less solid. So I weighed him and he had lost 44 grams in three days of being on the medication. He had lost the weight since I weighed him for the dosage of the medication. And I talked to my vet about this and she said, wow, this is very drastic weight loss, especially for a kitten who should be gaining weight. It's okay, let's not panic right away. This is a common side effect of being on steroids because it can um, impact your appetite and it can make your appetite lessen. And if you're not eating, you will be losing weight. So we stopped the steroid, we carried on with the antibiotic and it took a couple of days for him to stop losing weight but he did start to gain it back and I was very very happy about that. He did however stop wanting to take his medication. He'd always been a bit of a picky eater so I couldn't see my mobile vet because she was away. So I made an appointment with my local vet to get some more liquid antibiotics that I could syringe into him because he wasn't willingly taking any food that I'd laced with medicine and I didn't want him to not have the antibiotics and to risk this infection becoming more serious. 
so we got that everything was fine he started to gain the weight back and it wasn't a huge concern and he his head tilt whilst it was still present it was minor it wasn't getting worse and then this was on about the next wednesday after that i noticed that he'd lost weight again and then he sort of plateaued with his weight and so on that friday i called up my local vet practice and arranged an appointment for the following monday to do x-rays and bloods to see why he was losing weight because he shouldn't have been losing weight if we were treating the ear infection the weight loss must have been something else causing it i had that booked and everything seemed fine on the friday morning if he was getting sicker i would have made a more urgent appointment but he seemed absolutely fine and throughout none of this process was he unwell in himself he was perfectly his normal self so I was a bit stumped and we went out on Friday we met up with our friends we had some dinner and we came back about 8 p.m and I just could tell something was off and I hadn't felt this sort of like oh something's not right here regarding the situation up until this point and I was looking at him and I was like what is wrong with you I couldn't put my finger on exactly what was making me question if he was okay or not and after about an hour or so, I I saw it and I could explain it to other people. Sorry, they're just drinking juice out of my cup and spilling it right now. His breathing was incredibly fast and really, really shallow. Now, this is indicative of being in pain. Breathing whilst uh, side sucking and really, really laboured breathing is a sign of something either heart related or breathing specifically related fast breathing and shallow breathing sort of like this <laughs> is a sign of stress and or pain so i was like he's in pain in a lot of pain considering his condition and i watched him for an hour or so and he was just getting worse even after having some medicam so i decided to take him to the emergency vet i wanted the emergency vet to take an x-ray and they wouldn't take an x-ray and I said it's fine my local practice is open Saturday mornings and they told me I could come in on Saturday and get an x-ray if I needed to and I believed that that I would be able to do that so because I couldn't convince the, um, the emergency vet to get an x-ray on that Friday they gave him a shot of buprenorphine. I think is that how you said it something like that I'll put the type the little word here it's an opioid and it's just a stronger painkiller and yeah so we gave him that and we went back home and I didn't see any improvements in him when he was on that and in the morning he was same if not worse and I was a bit stressed out about this I called up my local practice and they told me actually no they can't do x-rays on a Saturday because they don't have enough staff in they only have one vet and one nurse in so I said why did you tell me that before and the receptionist couldn't give me an answer and then I called multiple practices and multiple emergency practices that were open that Saturday morning and none of them had exotics in and none of them wanted to see me so I went back to the emergency vet that I went to before it was the only one that wanted to see me they weren't exotic specialists they didn't have anyone specifically inclined to to know very much but they were the only ones willing to see me nobody else wanted to see me even a hospital in Birmingham that is known for its exotic specialists didn't have any in that weekend and it was very stressful after a really long appointment and having to really really advocate for myself and for my rat we finally got the x-ray they were hesitant to put him under to do the x-ray because they don't have specialist x-ray machines for smaller animals the picture isn't going to be as clear whoops and also they're not very great at reading x-rays um i will put the x-rays on the screen when we get to that point and i said it's okay i can send my x-ray these x-rays that you can take and i can send them to my go-to vet she's not working today but in an emergency situation she'll have a look at x-rays and see what's going on so eventually we had the x-ray taken he came through the anesthetic fine there was no worries with that and the vet came out and told me and she said I don't see anything concerning on these x-rays and this is one of the reasons I didn't want to do the x-rays because I don't see anything concerning and we don't have a clear picture and I'm not really sure what to do here like you could either hospitalize him or you could take him home and just give him nursing care and 
see a more specialist vet, I guess, on Monday. And I said, I don't think he's going to make it to Monday. And they were like, well, we can't do anything else. And then I was stuck in a really hard place waiting for a call back from my vet and I had a look at the x-rays myself now I'm going to put them up on screen and I'm going to point out what I saw and I didn't know what I was looking at I just looked at them and I was googling like healthy rat x-ray normal rat x-ray and I was even looking at the x-ray that I had taken a plum which was a really terrible photo of the x-ray this time I actually had the scans emailed to me so I was looking at these x-rays and the first thing that I saw when I looked at these x-rays are these black blobs and these black blobs is air so I don't know if you know how x-rays work but basically when the x-rays go through if it's going through something more like more easily so that's like the easiest to go through is air and then liquid it's going to be darker in color and then obviously bones and anything metal are more like stark white he had this area of gas he had these three areas of gas inside his digestive tract, is what I thought. But I wasn't sure I had an inkling. And then I finally was able to speak to my vet and she said, holy crap. And I said, yeah, they told me the x-rays were fine and they are not fine. And she said, obviously she's a little bit more inclined than me a lot more inclined than me and she pointed out two soft blockages at either end of this huge hold on sorry about that i don't even know what i was saying <laughs> hi Ezio. what she saw on the x-ray was soft blockages at either end and an entire sort of like turn of his intestine filled to the brim with gas. This is not normal and this is impaction like this is very very serious and he clearly was in a lot of pain and wasn't doing very well. I hadn't seen him eat or drink in probably about 24 hours and this was at a crisis point. She said I would be getting an ultrasound and I would be opening up that rat to see what's going on or I would be putting to sleep because it's at, at a very you know dire place. Now here was the trouble. I needed to find somebody who was able to do that surgery and nobody even wanted to see us. Any of the people that I called that morning, I think I called maybe six practices in like a 50 mile radius of me, nobody wanted to see us. So now I had the challenge of trying to find somebody who was willing and skilled enough to do a surgery on a tiny baby rat that was drastically declining as the day went on. So I called, uh, I think, one or two more places and had some quotes and the receptionist spoke to the vets and things. And there was one practice who was willing to do the surgery. However, they weren't confident in their own skill and they weren't confident in the outcome that it actually could help him. And I knew deep down inside that even if we could do the surgery and fix it, it would be such a tough recovery for him with really questionable likelihood of him actually making it through and that was like the crisis point and the decision point in this whole situation so given all of that knowledge of just how severe a situation was how much he was declining and how fast he was declining and the fact that even this vet wasn't so confident in the surgery itself or in her abilities we decided to make the call and it was soul destroying because given my history if you guys have been following my channel for a while i'm not like new to this rodeo of having really really sick baby rats this is the third time that it's happened to me and i really wish i didn't have to make a video like this i really wish that this didn't happen i really wish that colson was here with us but he's not so we got back home I spoke through in the entire situation with the breeder and I apologised, I profusely apologised to her. And by the way, she had been, oh, she had been amazing through this entire process and her husband as well. I couldn't have asked for more supportive friends and 
advisors, I guess, in this situation. Um, she was as sad as I was, obviously. And given everything, we were a bit confused as to why this happened, what was the cause of it. And given that it was a Saturday, I froze the body. And now looking back, that was a mistake because if I hadn't have froze the body, if I had put him in the fridge, we might have been able to have a post-mortem done to figure out the exact cause of what the blockage was. But in my haste, in my stress, I didn't quite think about that. If you're in a situation like this, it can be really useful to have a post-mortem done. But if you freeze the tissues, it really doesn't give you very much afterwards because of the damage that it does to the tissue. Because we were not very sure on exactly what happened, and I was in the one and a half hours or so, I was waiting for my vet to be able to see the x-rays. I had posted the x-ray onto the NFS forum and sent it to a couple of friends to sort of talk about it. And I think one thing that came up as a possible cause is this disease, this bacterial disease called Tizers. Now, Tizers is really infectious and is... I don't know very much about Tizers, but I do know that it's really infectious and it does tend to take rats very, very quickly from each other, but it's also opportunistic. So it takes rats with problems already. It normally is fine for rats that are otherwise healthy. So given that he, that Coulson was clearly fighting off some sort of infection or something going on with his ear, this would have made him a little bit weaker and more prone to developing a sickness from tizers so this was suggested by a couple of people on the forums and because of its really really damaging and fast way that it can take entire mischiefs out we were left with a really sticky situation because sinner a baby rat was all by himself now because we hadn't started intros yet and there was this risk, this potential risk, of passing on something incredibly infectious to other people. And given my experience from last year, if you've watched that video, that is not something I was prepared to risk. I wasn't prepared to risk anybody else's rats in a situation even similar to what I went through. And I spoke to the breeder and we spoke for a very long time about this. And we decided the safest solution to this problem that balanced all of the risks at play, the possible infectious nature and the risk to other pets and other people's rats, the problem and the risks of Sinner being alone as a baby without same age company. We balanced all of these risks and the situation of myself and the breeder and all of that things. And we decided that the safest balance of these risks was that we were going to watch and monitor Sinner for a few days to a week and then we were going to try intros with my group and as you can see those intros worked out thankfully um, but if that had not worked out Sinner would have gone back to them and gone in with his brothers and other relatives now that would have been much less ideal than him being in my group without same age company as they wouldn't have been able to take him back until next week when I'm filming that, which is three weeks. So that would have been three weeks by himself as a baby in a very pivotal socialising age. And I didn't want that for him. Now, obviously, this situation is very much not ideal. I wouldn't choose and I would not prefer to have a 12-week-old rat by himself in a group of adults. But it was the best and the safest balance of the risks involved, as I said. And it's not something that I would do without very good reason to. Here he is. This is Sinner. He is a mink silken. We've met him before. So that's the situation with Sinner. Now that's how we decided to proceed and maybe it wasn't the best call. Maybe we could have done something differently but I wasn't willing to put my rats or anybody else's rats more at risk. I wasn't willing to bring it in more rats to a potentially infectious situation. Now looking back, considering that nobody else in my group, not even any of my older rats or any of my other rats showed any sort of symptoms, I don't think it was something infectious. But given that there was a real possibility that it could have been something infectious, I'm at peace with my decision to 
handle it how I handled it because I didn't I did I couldn't risk anybody else's pets in that situation um having gone through it before and having really experienced just how horrible that is and like horrible isn't even a strong enough word I don't think I can't think of anything that's really describes how that actually felt I know I made a video last year talking about the border teller situation and it was much more informative and like facts and figures I don't think I really spoke much about how it emotionally impacted me and mentally impacted me um, but it really did and I really didn't want to put that on anyone else I didn't want to risk anyone else's pets suffering and I didn't want to risk anyone else's you know mental state so that's the decision that I made and I feel like I'm over explaining myself now and I don't want to do that because I feel like I'm over explaining myself for fear that some annoying person online is going to make an annoying comment being like hey you should have done this hey you should have done that because they've made that in even more simple scenarios they've made that in regards to plum and um I'm just trying to get ahead of that but stupid comments on the internet really shouldn't be making me over explain myself but here we are that's what happened that's the situation here and whilst I'm content and I'm at peace with making the decisions that I made during that time it doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt it doesn't mean that I am not so angry about it and it doesn't mean that just because I can talk openly about these things that it doesn't hurt that it, it isn't still raw because it very much is it's it feels like punching me when I'm down honestly and this is one of the reasons why I will really 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 advocate for starting with three rats and even getting three rats every time that you get new rats if if it's possible because things like this can happen and do happen and it's very, very stressful for everyone involved. So I'm going to leave this video um, with a montage of pictures and videos of Coulson and Sinner also being kittens and having fun and loving life. And that's what I'm going to leave this video on. And it's going to be a nice little memorial of Coulson and everything that we cherished about him. See you later, everyone.